Hello everyone, and welcome to my reading wrap-up for the Owls Readathon. Yes, this is very late. I'm honestly struggling a lot in my personal life, so this wrap-up is going to be brief, just because I don't have the energy to go into depth on all of these books. But I will link to the Goodreads reviews that I left that go into more details about my thoughts on each of these books. For the readathon, I chose Cursebreaker as my career that I'm aiming toward, and I did complete all six of the exams for Cursebreaker. The first was Ancient Runes, which was to read a retelling. I read Briar Rose by Jane Yolen, which is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty told against the backdrop of World War II and the concentration camps. And I gave it five stars. It was extraordinary. One of the most powerful and memorable books that I have ever read and probably will ever read. I highly, highly recommend it. Next was Arithmancy, to read a work written by more than one author. I read Because You Love to Hate Me, which is an anthology of stories written from the point of view of villains. Some were original stories, some were fresh takes on traditional stories that we've come to know. As with most anthologies, I thought the majority of the stories were just okay, if not poor, but the standouts for me were Amory's story, Marissa Meyer's story, and V.E. Schwab's story. Overall, I gave the anthology 2.5 stars. Next is Charms to read an adult work. I read the graphic novel Dawn Volume 2 by Joseph Michael Linsner and really disliked it. It's extremely blatantly self-indulgent. He tries to go into these philosophical ideas as if to heighten the purpose of the graphic novel, but it's really just an excuse to draw pinup ladies for the male gaze. One star. Next was the Defense Against the Dark Arts test, which is to read a book that starts with an R, and I read Running Out of Time by Margaret Peterson Haddix. It's definitely geared toward a younger age group, but overall I did mostly enjoy it. It had some problems, but it comes with the territory sometimes. I gave it 3.5 stars, and it's very obvious that the movie The Village from M. Night Shyamalan drew from this book. Very, very obvious. And then for the potions exam, which was to read a sequel, I read Monstrous Volume 3, which I gave 4.5 stars. It continues to be utterly gorgeous, really intriguing. I love the balance of cuteness with the very heavy dark elements. Highly recommend, cannot wait for the next volume. And lastly, for the Curse Breaker exams for Transfiguration, I read a book with a red cover, Good Bones and Simple Murders by Margaret Atwood. This is a collection of short stories from her. I really like Margaret Atwood post-apocalypse or dystopian novels like The Handmaid's Tale and The Mad Adam Trilogy, but every time I've tried to read her other genre books, I couldn't get through any of them. I just can't connect to her contemporaries, and it was pretty much the same with these types of stories. I gave the whole volume overall 1.5 stars. There was occasional really good writing in certain moments and phrases, but overall the stories were sometimes just paragraphs long and didn't do anything for me. After I finished the Curse Breaker exams, I went into my overachiever mode and completed three additional exams. For Care of Magical Creatures, which was to read a book with a land animal on the cover, I had originally chosen The Plague Dogs by Richard Adams, who wrote Watership Down. But then I actually read the description of the book and started to read the first page or so, and it's about dogs who are escaping from an abusive science lab, and I just can't stomach that. No matter how good the writing is, I just can't handle it. So I switched to a reread of Timeline by Michael Crichton. I read this years and years ago and remember really liking it, although the movie with Gerard Butler did an atrocious job of adapting it. And like with the other books by Crichton that I've been reading over the last couple years, it's just okay. It's maybe one of the better ones that I've read, although that's mostly because I was able to tune out of the audiobook when he goes into these long long pages of political history that I just didn't care about. But the idea of historians going back in time to the time period that they're really interested in was cool and how they deal with that, and I thought it was a good balance between the action and everything else that was going on, so three stars.
Next, for the herbology exam, which was to read a book with a plant on the cover, I read My Life at Rose Red, The Diary of Ellen Rimbauer, which is a spin-off from the Rose Red TV series from Stephen King. And I really like the TV series. It has its problems, but overall I really enjoy it. Unfortunately, this book just really didn't add anything at all. The characters didn't feel like the characters in the TV series. There were some weird sexual dynamics that came in that were just out of left field and made no sense. It wasn't scary and it was just really flat and there was nothing additional from what we saw in the TV series other than, again, that kind of backdrop, ooh, we're edgy with all this sexual dynamics going on and this pseudo-lesbianism that we're kind of maybe hinting at. I was like, no, I'll just go read fan fiction with actual lesbian content and that'll be much better. So I gave it two stars. I don't really recommend it. And the last exam that I took was History of Magic, which was to read a book published at least 10 years ago. I finished the Dawn graphic novel series with Volume 3 by Joseph Michael Linsner, and like Volume 2, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> if you are interested in really blatantly seeing how much an author puts himself into the hero character of his own book and how highly and grossly he thinks of himself, then it would be a good volume for you to read, otherwise it'll just make you extremely nauseous. Its treatment of women is flat and gross and objectifying, and then the commentary at the end just really, really puts the nail in the coffin about his homophobia and how really, really gross he is. Transparently gross. One star, don't recommend. And that's everything that I read for the Owls Readathon. I'm really looking forward to continuing with the Newt's Readathon coming up. Let me know down in the comments if you read any of these books, if you participated in Owls, or are planning to participate in Newt's. Thanks for joining me.